and this is going to remind me of a uh, question that came into Earth Journal after I wrote about your um, talk at the Environmental Initiative Program a few months ago. And the question was, how can it be good for bees to be planting forage territory next to a strip of asphalt carrying huge steel objects at 80 miles an hour? Is it putting bees in danger by moving them near roadways? You know, bees don't really cross the road. If you provide enough <laughs> flowers on one side, they're going to hang out right there. So, um, so I wouldn't worry about it. I, w I really wouldn't worry about it. More, it's the pollutants from the cars that might get on the flowers that are the bigger problem rather than the cars per se. So the, the roadsides, you have to be really careful about when you're doing roadside planting. So maybe it's not that eight foot strip that we need to mow for, for safety reasons. Maybe it's eight feet in where it's more flowers so that we can, that's far enough away, the bees would stay back there and be a little farther away from the pollutants. Well, now I, I guess I want to follow up on that too because I've, I've heard you um, address this a couple times. It never fails to amaze me. It might amaze some people here to say a little bit about what the foraging territory of, uh, of bees is, what the extent is that they... Yeah, thanks. That's a great question. A honeybee colony, on an, an average foraging trip, when a honeybee colony leaves her colony and goes out shopping, is two miles. So a two-mile radius around a honeybee colony is 8,000 acres. So that's their territory. So a lot of people think, oh, I'll plant a few flowers in my backyard, I'll get a beehive, and no. <laughs> They're taking the city, basically, or a, an area. Our native bees fly generally under half a mile, so their foraging range is a lot less. They're much more localized. So yes, for your native bees, you can plant enough for them, and they really like um, places without mulch so they can get into the ground and nest. 